Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video, and this time it is going to be on my updated Performer Pals Zodiac deck list as it currently stands after the playtesting and events that I've played at and all that sort of nonsense. Now, I've been playing at a lot of events, I've been playing at a lot of locals, I've been playing online a bit, and ultimately I've just been evolving this deck every single time as it goes. And I've also done a lot of videos for the channel with this deck as far as a quite a few dual videos and I did a previous profile on the deck as well as the list that I played at YCS Atlanta and since that list the deck has just taken a bunch of like evolutionary turns in terms of like the theory that's gone into it the theory that's gone behind certain card choices the practicality of certain card choices and things like that and I've ultimately just been really enjoying the way this deck has been shaping up as uh, as it's been going on and I really like how unique it is it's definitely like something that I could say is like my project uh, because it's something that's really strong and meta-viable, but it is very unique in the aspect of, like, nobody else is doing it. But anyway, I'm not going to waste too much more time, and I'm just going to get straight into the deck list. The deck list is as follows. Starting with three Perform Pal Pendulum Sorcerer. This card is definitely your bread and butter of the Perform Pal engine. Uh, every time you resolve this card's effect, it just puts you so far ahead in resources because it allows you to search a potential draw to, as well as also clearing your Pendulum Scales out for a better Pendulum Summon next turn while replacing the Scales. And so, it just always is really hard to lose any game Game where you resolve Pendulum Sorcerer at least once, because every time you resolve it, one time even, it just puts you really far ahead in advantage and resources, and that's essentially what this format is about. It's about resources at this point. Um, it's a very heavy resource game, but one copy of Skullcrabat Joker for the generic good, like strong normal summon in the search. Uh, one copy of Guturtle and two copy of Lizard Draw for the generic draw two play, as I've already said, the Guturtle Lizard Draw draw two play. Uh, that powers you ahead in resources. And then for Sky Iris targets, I'm playing one copy of Performer Pal Odd Eyes Light Phoenix and one copy of Performer Pal Odd Eyes Unicorn. Now, I was playing Odd Eyes Mirage Dragon over this for a long time, but in all the testing I've been doing, it's just come up multiple times where this being a Performer Pal is much more relevant than Odd Eyes Mirage Dragon being a 3. Like, I've only ever Pendulum Summoned Mirage Dragon as a 3 once, but it not being a Performer Pal in all my testing came up dozens of times where, like, I could just put this in my scale with a Lizard Draw, pop it to get a, get a draw, and then Pendulum Summon. Like, doing things like that, being able to search this card off of Pendulum Sorcerer, uh, like, it's just, it's it came up a lot, and so it's been swapped back in. And uh, Light Phoenix is just better than Persona Dragon in literally every way, effects-wise and name-wise. The only thing Persona Dragon has that's better than uh, Light Phoenix is the fact that it's a one scale, but it's an inferior card in every other aspect. So, like, if Light Phoenix was a scale 2, you'd literally never hear anybody talking about Odd Eyes Persona Dragon, because scale 2 is, like, low enough to be really good, but... One copy of Dragoons of Draconia to be a searchable low scale off of your Broad Bull. And three Magical Abductors. These have replaced the Ariadnes uh, because they are a low scale, but they also just allow you to run less clunky cards. Like, you don't have to run Second Donkey anymore uh, in the list because of the fact that you just have these as a way to search your way to Pendulum Sorcerer and get your, uh, get your play strings going. Ultimately, this card is just fantastic. This is probably my favorite Pendulum monster that's ever been printed. It's a relevant low scale. It would definitely be better if it was like a two scale, but its, scales of, its scale effect is super relevant because it just fuels Pendulum decks. Its monster effect is super relevant because it pumps itself and can search defensive lines in the form of like Effect Veiler and stuff like that. It's just overall just a really strong card, and I can't say enough good things about Magical Abductor, so I'm just going to move on before I spend 10 minutes talking about everything I love about Magical Abductor. But two copies of Arch Phoenix Century. This card is a searchable high scale, it's back or removal, and it's monster effect is actually super relevant against like pure zoo. Uh, if you're able to pendulum summon this once per turn, every turn, and then distribute it off to pop a monster, the zoo deck is very weak to just generic monster removal, especially recurrable monster removal. And so if you get yourself into a grind game with zoo, this card is one of your MVPs because you can just pop a card for free every single turn. And they can't keep up resource wise with that because you'll just be able to just keep outing their boards and then doing whatever other little plays you're doing while you're grinding through with them. And you'll just be really far ahead in resources every single time you pop a card with this. So, like, it's actually really cool. But then, one copy of Mask Chameleon to be a searchable level 4 tuner off your King of the Fairlamps plays to go into Stardust and Ignister. And then for the Zoo Engine, playing three copies of Rat Pierre, three copies of Speedroid Teratop, and one copy of Speedroid Takatomborg. And then there's also the Lunalite Black Sheep in here for this Fusion Substitute combo. This is definitely a deck that I feel like abuses the Fusion Substitute combo really well because instead of trying to draw into, like, defensive cards, while you can draw into defensive cards in the form of, like, Max. C, Valor, Dimensional Barrier, Book of Moon, and all that, you are also just trying to draw into combo pieces that allow you to perform better Pendulum Summons and generate your own defensive lines in the form of Stardust, Dryden Boards, or Odd Eyes Vortex Dragon, and stuff like that. Um, so being able to draw potentially five cards turn one is very, very effective for you as a strategy with this deck, because any rat play will allow you to resolve an Emerald, resolve Fusion Substitute to draw a card, and then based off what you want to make, you either make another Emerald and draw a third card, and then Pendulum Summon, or you make King of the Feralimps to search a high scale in the form of Lizard Draw, 
um, depending on how your play string is going. And then if you're able to Pendulum Summon Sorcerer at any point after this, because you've dug into your deck for a few extra cards and you could have like resolved Abductor and stuff like that, then you could potentially draw four or five cards when you add Geturtle Lizard Draw on top of that. And so like it's just it's a very strong uh, it's a very strong like opening that this deck has now, um, and it's just something I felt like was very like. Like, something that definitely should have been included. Uh, it's something that definitely fits with this deck, because instead of trying to draw trap cards, you're drawing combo pieces, and so it just helps this deck out a lot. Uh, but then, for hand traps, two copies of Effect Veiler and two copies of Max C. You can search Veiler off Magical Abductor, so that's kind of why it's in this list over Ghost Ogre, but my opinion on Veiler right now in the format is that it's definitely increasing in playability in the format, as the pure Zoo decks and Zoo variants are fluctuating more towards the Fusion Substitute package being a staple. Valor has just as many applications as Ghost Ogre does, but the applications that it has over Ghost Ogre are better than what Ghost Ogre provides. Ghost Ogre has always just been played because it's good for removal, but it's only really like amazing on copies of like Zodiac Barrage. If you're trying to use it on their monsters, they can usually still just end in a Drydent. Uh, whereas like Valor, you can Valor your, their MX Saber Invokers, you can uh, Valor like Terratops if you want to. You can, uh, you can Valor like different points across the combo, but the main point is that with the Fusion Substitute thing being basically made a staple, if your opponent goes into their Emerald and their Zodiac Xyz, and they use their Emerald draw a card, and then they fuse away the Emerald and the Zoo Xyz for Norden, and you Valor that Norden when they try to bring back Rat, 99% of the time, like, their play string just ends. They've only gotten one extra card. If they've used their normal summon already, then they need to have access to, like, Zoo Barrage in order to put another monster on board to continue the play line. But even then, like, they've usually already used their Tiger Mortar, so they can't re-equip Rat. So they have to be able to get a Rat out of deck, which means that they have a very weakened combo potential for, like, what they're able to do. Uh, because they're really relying on that Norden bringing back that Rat. So I think Valor has a lot of really good applications in the format again. And the fact that it's searchable off Magical Abductor just makes it a bit better uh, for this deck. I like it a lot better than Ghost Ogre right now. Uh, but that was 28 monsters. For spells, there's two copies of Skyers and two copies of Terraforming, and then the one Odd Eyes Fusion just to round out the package. Uh, this is very good with Magical Abductor. It's actually just like a really strong going second card as well, because you're able to Sky Iris, pop a Pendulum Scale, add Odd Eyes Fusion, and be able to play it into a board of like Drancia or Dryden plus uh, Emerald. And it basically just baits back rows by itself. And then if you combine that with like a way to resolve Arch Phoenix Centric, uh, then you can basically like start dismantling boards and then have a combo potential with uh, with a rat play or something. Uh, but also like these are just really good starter cards. Like they just help fuel your pendulum engine and stuff like that and just make the deck overall just really flow better. But for the uh, for the spells that support the Zodiac uh, theme, I'm actually only playing two copies of Zodiac Barrage and two copies of Lullaby of Obedience in the main. Now these I'm, I'm playing over Tinkies right now. Because this card can call Speedroid Terratop against, like, almost every deck in the format. Or you can just call, like, Zodiac Rat Pierre. Or if you put five monsters on the board with your own hand and have this, then you can call Max C and your opponent's forced to put it in your hand because your monster zones are full. Uh, but I'm playing two copies of Barrage and two copies of Lullaby because they essentially do the same thing. Lullaby is essentially just a little bit more flexible in terms of what it allows you to do. Um, but Barrage is obviously better because if you're calling Rat with uh, Lullaby of Obedience, then you're going to have to commit your normal summon to it. So essentially, it's like it's no worse than Tanky would be, uh, but I'm only playing two copies of Barrage currently because I wanted to minimize on the number of cards in my deck that are hard once per turns. Um, and so, like, if you draw like two like uh, Barrages, that's just a minus one in your hand uh, for the turn. And this is a very like combo thirsty deck. Like, you want cards that are usable, and so that's why there's only two and two. But Lullaby of Obedience is actually just, like one of my favorite cards right now because of the fact that you're able to take your opponent's hand traps, you're able to take your opponent's things. I'm not playing Whiptail in the deck, and at events that I've played at with this card, I've just been like, alright, I needed your Whiptail, so I'll activate Lullaby and call Whiptail, and they'll either summon it or put it in my hand, and I'll just put it under the Dryden and, like, attack things with it. And, like, it's just, it works out really well. It makes it, it makes it to where your deck has access to some cards out of your opponent's deck, and that's actually just super neat and super cool. But one copy of Fusion Substitute for the play, and one copy of Book of Moon. Book of Moon is, like, the strongest, like, going first and going second card in the format right now. Uh, because going first, you can obviously just set it, and it is a very strong trap against Zoo, uh, Book of Moon and Rat. And also, uh, going second, you can just use it, Book of Moon Dryden, on the very start of the turn, and then you can continue your plays, like, basically unimpeded, except for the traps that they have. Uh, so there is that, but that is, uh, I believe, like, ten spells. And then there's three traps in the form of three copies of Dimensional Barrier. It's the only trap that I felt like was worth playing. Uh, emptiness isn't really that strong, um, like, going second, so I didn't want to play it. Like, this deck really struggles with going second a lot more than going first because it is a very, like, heavy combo-oriented deck and it can be, like, dismantled, but there definitely are ways to play going second. 
And this card is just good to draw when you're going second as well because you could draw it, you could set it, you can out your opponent's like monster boards with it, um, and like basically allow you to play on your next turn if that's if that's the extent of play lines that you have to go down. But for the extra deck, one copy of Odd Eyes Vortex Dragon and then the Odd Eyes Rebellion and the Odd Eyes Meteor Burst Dragon for the Odd Eyes Fusion targets. There's literally no reason to be playing Raging Dragon over this because you can never summon either of them. So it was just the copy I had. Um, so that's why it's here. Because some people were really confused on that in the last video. He's like, why aren't you playing Raging Dragon? It's better than Rebellion. It's like, yeah, but you realize that none, of, neither of the cards are summonable in this deck, right? And then that was the point at which they just started being quiet. But uh, one copy of Ignister and one copy of uh, Stardust Dragon for the level 8s that you can summon. You can actually summon Meteor Burst Dragon with uh, Mass Chameleon as well. So like that's actually why it's here over uh, Absolute Dragon um, as the Odd Fusion target because it's actually summonable. Uh, but these cards are both like what you go into every game. Stardust Dragon definitely more so than Ignister. Ignister I've actually considered cutting multiple times because I very rarely make it. But every time you do make it, it's like game ending. So it's worth the spot. But then one copy of Norden for the Fusion Substitute combo. Uh, one copy of King of the Feralimps. And then two copies of Digusto Emerald are the just generic rank 4s. There's not a lot of space in this deck for generic rank 4s anymore because of the fact that... Uh, that the uh, the zoo uh, the fusion substitute play basically implemented the need for the second for the second emerald and the Norden, so it like took up a bunch of extra spots and then the odd eyes fusion has already taken up a lot of spots uh, but for the zoo exceeds I'm only playing one of each um, this is all I have room for and it's weird because you'd have to resolve broad bowl twice for the fusion substitute combo but there's a way that you do the combo where you just make broad bowl first and then you detach it off tiger mortar to re-equip rat and then uh, from there you're able to uh, you're able to just do your stuff. Uh, so it's it's definitely doable and then you shuffle it back off the first emerald and then make it the second time So it's doable with one of each. I haven't really missed the second copy of either of them uh, But I do side a second dryant for those uh, games where I'm going first and I just take out like the rebellion dragon uh, Just because odd eyes fusion is usually not going to resolve for uh, for extra deck uh, Materials, so I just swap uh, like those cards out for the extra deck uh, for the extra extra deck dryant uh, But then for the rank threes one copy of totem bird and one copy of mx saber invoker uh, this is obvious. You start your zoo plays, and then this is just another defensive line. If you open Totem Bird, um, plus a way to do a rat play. Like if you open Terra Top, plus a way to do a rat play, then you just make Totem Bird, and you get an extra defensive line. And so it just helps you out with all of your board states. Uh, honestly, I really think Mass Chameleon, um, not Mass Chameleon, um, Equipped Engineer would probably be a little bit better for the slot. But as it stands, like you are rarely ever making rank threes outside of your Terra Top. So like. Totem Bird just seems fine anyway, but Mass Chameleon, not, why do I keep saying Mass Chameleon? Uh, Met Clipped Engineer is a little bit better suited for going second. But anyway, that is the deck profile. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. If you want to see some of this deck in action, definitely go check out some of my other videos. I've done like three or four different dual videos, um, like match-wise, with the deck in this form, um, I think at least. And uh, so it's definitely out there. There's definitely a, a video going up today as well that may already be up by the time this one goes out, uh, which is another dual video of me playing the deck and just showing how the deck can perform. Uh, but other than that, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Any questions, comments, concerns, and all that nonsense, definitely be sure to like and subscribe for more content. And check out the links to the description of my Facebook and Patreon pages. If you want to help support the channel directly, to help support me uh, directly, then uh, Patreon is the way to go, as well as it gets you into a monthly raffle giveaway for a high dollar card or sealed product, uh, whatever the flavor of the month essentially is at that point, as well as possible access to my personal Discord server to chat with me and uh, play games with me for videos and stuff like that. But if you're also looking for a way to buy or sell cards while also indirectly supporting the channel, then be sure to check out Second Chance Gaming's website that is linked in the description as well. They are actually the provider of all the Zodiac cards and the Terra Tops and stuff in this deck profile. They are a direct sponsor of me and the channel, and they have provided me with some things to make some content for you guys as well as play. So... I'm a big fan of how they do business as well with what I've dealt with. Their pricing and shipping are both very good from what I've experienced. But if you're looking to acquire cards from this video and all that sort of nonsense, then definitely give them a uh, check out. And if you uh, end up doing any business with them, then let them know that Phoenix sent you. But other than that, uh, thanks for watching this video. Again, let me know what your thoughts are down below. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your time. And as usual, guys, take care. I will see you in the next video.